Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. James Bouchard. We hope to show you some hot technology to go along with our very hot Austin weather. So, welcome. I'd like to share a few experiences from my early days in measurements. So going back, I started full time, worked at the University Research Lab back in 1986. I mean, uh, 65, excuse me. <laughs> some some 40, 46 years ago. That was an interesting time because there was a major transition in instrument taking, take, uh, taking place in that time frame. We were moving from vacuum tubes to uh, transistors and uh, semiconductors, and, and also the computer was coming into instrumentation. So uh, in my early days, my first uh, job was to make these impedance measurements on the Wayne Kerr bridge that I had to sit there and null and make a frequency response plot of impedances. That was very time consuming, very tedious. Obviously, that would be a great insp uh, inspiration for automating the uh, measurements uh, that we would do later. And then we also did some experiments with near field measurements, where it's literally thousands of points as a function of frequency. And this, again, would uh, uh, encourage us to use computers to do our measurements instead of manual measurements. So I started working with the Wayne Kerr bridge. And then one of the staples for me was a general radio uh, recording wave analyzer. It was actually an automated instrument. If you look on there, you see a little, ch on the picture, you see a chain that drove, a, mo a motor driven, where the um, oscillator frequency was changed by the same motor that was running the plotter. So you had a kind of automation. So that would be a very important instrument in my early days. Now, if you look at the, uh, what we did, we were working on uh, uh, one of the systems Jeff, uh, Bill, and I did, the three founders of the company, was this ANFKM-12, which is a transducer measurement system that had to measure some thousand different uh, transducers with 26 different tests uh, as, with frequency responses and the like. So uh, Jeff, Bill, and I came up with a system that was automated to do this, and this was using uh, computers and it would be, uh, include the elements of virtual instrumentation that we would go on to really be uh, the things we've uh, been the real fundamentals of what we've done with virtual instrumentation. It included digitizers, it included multiple computers, uh, a Unix system, and then two real, of uh, Jeff's real-time Unix uh, that he had created, and then time measurements which uh, we needed to do because in acoustics you have to worry about reflection and like. So that would really be the foundation of our thinking about virtual instrumentation. Now, looking back at the history of instrumentation to put things in perspective, in, uh, throughout from 1920 on to about 1965, general radio in uh, off-the-shelf general purpose instrumentation was really the kings of the, of the business. They, they had built their business over the years East, Melville Eastman had been very successful in building a very successful business. They would, in the mid-60s, move on more into the ATE arena. Uh, and with the advent uh, moving from vacuum tubes, which they had uh, been very successful with, the next uh, instrumentation vendor, Hewlett Packard, would really take advantage of transistors and integrated circuits. And, and for the next 45 years, just like General Radio had prevailed for 45 years. Uh, Hewlett Packard for the next 45 years would really, really be center stage for instrumentation. Now, because I worked at the university, I tended to use a whole lot more of the General Radio instruments because they were, uh, you know, universities tend to have a little older instruments. So, uh, so basically, uh, my experience had been primarily with General Radio and some in Dumont scope I actually used. So uh, uh, I mentioned that uh, computers and, uh, were coming into a fray. So the, going forward, if you look at what's happening now in, uh, in this decade, we see software as the center stage of uh, how instrumentation is be 
built. Everywhere around us we see how software is taken over smart mobile devices, smartphones, tablets and the like. It's really software that's at the center stage. And that's what we at National Instruments focus on first in our uh, software's to instrument uh, perspective. If you look at instrument use cases, there's of course the standalone instruments, then the PC-based analysis often in the past and, and now is, do, is done with GPIB, and then there's these custom measurements. And that's really what we did with the FQM-12, is we made custom measurements that would, uh, uh, because there was no instrument that did what we needed to do in the acoustical measurement area. So we created a custom instrument to do that fundamentally, and, and that was uh, how we came to see our vision for virtual instrumentation. Now there's also automated tests, which uh, General Radio, now uh, then later Generad went on to do, that was specialized in production, high volume, high speed production testing as well. So it's also automated. Uh, virtual instrumentation was this really new point of view where we uh, used the phrase, the software, it's the instrument, this combination of hardware and software, where it's a software that's focused on first, and you try to do everything you can possibly do in software, and what's left over is done in hardware. So that's basically how we, uh, uh, the philosophy to this day, we, we try to use to maximize the benefits we get for the customer, now, in the early 90s, we started uh, looking at this vision of how we can use digitizers along with our software and framing it up as a goal for the company. I sometimes call this the manifest destiny of what we're trying to do, where uh, we talk about the bits of resolution of the A to D and the frequency uh, sample rate we're trying to achieve. We uh, compared the then available personal uh, plug-in boards, they're not all, work, all national instruments boards, uh, with what the traditional instruments could do. And so our quest over the next decade, two decades really, was to close that gap between the capabilities you could do with the traditional instruments. And we've come a long, long way in that process, where now we cover much of the uh, range, many areas. We actually have better performance because uh, technology, Moore's Law with digitizers continue to drive better and better capability. We've even built some of our own high performance, high dynamic range A to D capability as well. Most recently, we acquired Face Matrix and this is gonna allow us to uh, penetrate the very highest end capabilities. And a matter of fact, they make the front end for the highest bandwidth oscilloscope on the marketplace right now. So, so we feel we have the technology now that we can uh, accomplish our destiny of creating a new alternative way for doing instrumentation. Uh, obviously, Moore's Law has been very, very favorable. We use it two different ways. Uh, in terms of processing uh, performance with multi-core CPUs, and LabVIEW is, does very, very well at multi-core, so we're able to program these multiple cores well. And then uh, FPGA, so uh, as well. And LabVIEW is unique in how it can combine programming both multi-core processors and FPGAs in the same environment, gives us a tremendous capability to building this virtual instrumentation. We also, last year, pointed out that Moore's Law should also be driving uh, smaller form factor uh, measurement mod modules. We, we, in VXI in the 80s, uh, PXI in the 90s, and now CREAL in this decade. Uh, and these, uh, um, because the transistors improved by factor 2000, we should expect smaller instrumentation as well. So we've try, tried to drive that. And the real key is software that works over the timeline with compatibility, as we see on like PCs, where you can reuse it and upgrade your hardware without having to spend a lot of effort redoing your programs. That's a very, very important point. We've done that with long-term compatibility with instrument interfaces and products like our LabVIEW uh, software. Critical long-term compatibility to create the most value for our customers because of reuse. 
Now, uh, going back to the history some 25 years ago when we announced LabVIEW, it was based on this vision of virtual instrumentation with the idea we had seen the spreadsheet and how effective it had been in creating an alternative way to do programming for financial analysis. We wanted to do that for our test and measurement customers. Now I feel, feel like Jeff really accomplished that in creating a unique programming language that was basically the ability to build virtual instruments with a front panel and then the graphical data flow programming approach, structured data flow as some folks would call it. And it's really proved the test of time. It's been effective. Nobody's found a better way to do what we did with LabVIEW. And we're here today to talk about the many different exciting applications we're able to do. Now, because LabVIEW was very successful at building these systems with a platform-based approach, we were able to expand LabVIEW into system-level design, not only test and measurement systems, but industrial embedded and control systems. And this has been a, a very exciting area for us, and you'll see many, many exciting uh, applications in this space as well. So we define this in this new way where we have test and measurement with this uh, very uh, powerful capability, including multi-core and FPGAs, and then this industrial embedded area where we can take on some of the big challenges, whether it be big physics problems or green engineering, um, wind, wind energy and the like, all in this platform. And we use the phrase, to do for embedded what the PC did for the desktop, meaning we create a standardized platform that gets used over and over again, creating an ecosystem that's used by literally tens of thousands of folks to create a better way to build systems. And this uh, capability also gives us capability in test and measurement where we can do these embedded applications, the hardware in the loop applications, software defined radio and the like. So it really expands our capability in test and measurement as well. So we use the phrase graphical system designed to capture the umbrella or platform. It is a platform based approach, which means this ecosystem is open in a way that you can plug any of thousands of different components in and they work, whether it is software or hardware. So in another way to look at it, we're creating an environment where we can have an exploration space. So no matter what your problem is, you have a way to uh, think about it uh, and then create software in LabVIEW to implement the solution and then choose your hardware depending on the capabilities, the ruggedness, the like that you need to, to create the solution. So in, uh, we sometimes use the phrase models of computation to capture this environment where you have multiple ways to look at your problem in the way you'd like to look at it with our structured data flow, uh, C coding, uh, text-based .m files, uh, continuous time simulation, state charts, all mapping into this LabVIEW framework onto your choice of, uh, of hardware. So this really creates a powerful platform and creates what you see and will see this week is the incredible applications that we're able to do. Now, looking back on instrumentation, uh, instruments uh, in the early days were built with analog components. These components were uh, relatively unstable, so they needed very careful calibration. Uh, they were very sensitive, took a lot of work to make them work. So they tend to make these instruments very expensive and very specialized. With our approach of virtual instrumentation, we uh, work with digitizers, and in the case of RF down converters, and then the rest of the job can be uh, any number of things, whether it's one of the many, many, many wireless standards and uh, radar and the like, all can use the same ecosystem and infrastructure and platform. So this gives very, very high reuse, and so routinely, we're achieving much better performance than somebody worked really hard to create a one-off solution. And that's when an ecosystem or platform really wins, when it can perform like, like the PC now, processors are now used in even the most powerful supercomputers because of their performance. So volume really creates the opportunity. 
So looking to the future, recently we acquired AWR. And our AWR uh, technology is really focused on high frequency design. And there's a tremendous interaction between design and test and RF because of the complexity and the sensitivity to the geometries that are involved and having the ability to integrate this design capability tightly with the test capability really gives us a differentiated position and also makes us whole in uh, our ability to solve the customers that are uh, problems our customers need in this RF space. Now we also have uh, early access version of our DSP diagram which is intended to take LabVIEW to the next step with high performance, high speed streaming. We've been for the last uh, several years working intensely on this problem because we want to make LabVIEW the tool of choice for high speed streaming computation for RF and applications like that. We'll see some very, very impressive demonstrations uh, on this. Now we've always in the past uh, talked about how we wanted to achieve higher performance with our solution, lower cost, higher integration with this platform, and a great development productivity. And the theme of LabVIEW 2011 is productivity. So over the last decades, we've had this mission of these uh, PC ideas, we've called it, with our platform of graphical system design, this platform-based approach uh, to create better solutions, a better way to do test and measurement applications, a better way to do industrial embedded. Here's an example with CERN, where there's 120 uh, PXI systems around the large uh, Hadron Collider ring, and then lots of PXI throughout their system. So we've been able to deliver that performance, the capability, the reliability that that application need. And in, in, in another front, EcoCar, uh, which you'll hear more about, uh, with Virginia Tech came in uh, number one overall and with the shortest stopping distance, best drive quality, best consumer uh, acceptability and fuel consumption. So tremendous win in the face of competition uh, from 15 other schools. So really showing how LabVIEW delivers uh, to the bottom line and creating the uh, outcomes that these students wanted. So summarizing, we're here, uh, we're working to solve the engineering grand challenges where uh, what we do and what you do and uh, makes a big difference and you're doing these uh, different applications. These are defined to make this a better place, a better world. So thank you once again for joining us at NI Week.